it. Okay. okay. Uh, what we are going to cover, inshallah, I'm going to cover module two of CCNA two, which talking about a switching concepts. So we are going to discuss some basic switching concepts related to the switch device. So first point, we are going to talk about frame forwarding. Now, before we talk about the frame forwarding, you need to know that different type of switches are used in LANs network, WAN network, PSTN, public switches, telephone network. So the decision on how the switch will forward the traffic may based on the flow of that traffic, which means the switch will accept the traffic from input port, let me say. The switch will follow some steps or process in order to make a decision. Where should I transfer this frame? So we have two tips associated with the frame entering and leaving any interface. So in case of the frame, enter the switch, the term will be used is ingress. Ingress means what? Describe, it will be used to describe the board where the frame enters the device. Which device we are talking about here? The switch. Egress, exit. So it will be used to describe the board that the frame will use when leaving the device. Any switch, any switch as you have will maintain a MAC table or CAM table. It can be called also CAM table. So let us understand the ingress and egress before we talk about the tables and how the switch will make the forward decision. For example, suppose we have received a frame on board one. Now, what's the MAC address of the device connected to board one? It will be entered on the switch. Now, the destination MAC, the destination MAC, as you know, the switch is Ethernet layer two. It will use the source and destination MAC address, not the IP address. So let us assume the frame entered the switch at port one. When we examine the frame, we see that the destination MAC address is AC. So according to this table, the ingress will be port one, Ingress five. I know it's port five because the destination MAC was AC, and according to this table, according to this table, AC MAC connected to the switch at port five. Another example, for example, the ingress is two. The MAC address is. EA. So EA as a MAC address is port 4. So the N will be port 2. The egress will be port 4 according to the MAC address table maintained at each switch. So LAN switch will maintain a table and will use that table as a reference when forwarding the traffic through the switch. So the only intelligence way of the switch is to use that table in order to make a decision. Where should I forward this incoming frames? So the switch will forward any frame or any ingress forward the frame based on the ingress interface and the destination MAC address. So we'll see what's the input or the ingress interface. Why? Because we need to maintain, update our MAC table. And we'll make a decision where to forward any incoming frames according to the destination MAC address of that frame. So the switch will use a MAC address table in order to make forward decision. Before we talk about this, keep in your mind the switch will never 
allow the graphic to be forwarded out to the same interface it received the traffic from. So if the input is, for example, port one, for example, the input is port one, and what we have, we have a broadcast MAC address. So it will be forwarded to all other ports, all of them, except of the ingress port. So it will never, the switch will never forward out the interface to the same interface it received the traffic. Now, now what's the MAC address state? The switch will use the destination MAC address to determine the egress interface. After we receive a frame, the switch will examine the destination MAC address. According to the content of the MAC table, it will determine where it should be sent. So before the switch make a decision, the switch must learn about the interface or which interface this destination is located at. So how the switch will learn? The switch simply need to learn make a relation between each port and the device exists on that port. So the switch will learn a relationship between the ports and the devices. How? By building a table called MAC address table. This table usually stored in contained addressable memory, say EM, contained addressable memory. This memory is a special type of memory, but it's provide a high speed searching or to use high speed searching application. So MAC table can be also called CAM table, contained addressable table. So LAN switch will determine how to handle any incoming data by keep maintaining and updating the MAC address table. So the switch will populate the MAC address table by recording what? The address of each device connected to each port. So what we will add to the MAC table? What's the device connected to which port? Simply like this. Based on this MAC address, we can make a decision where we should forward any ingress data or frame. Now, how the switch will learn? So the switch will learn, which means we are going to maintain and update our MAC table. Based on the MAC table contained, we can make the forward decision. How the switch will learn? So the switch will use two steps or two processes. The first process is called learn. The second one, make a forward decision. So during the layer, what will happen? The switch will examine the source address, the source MAC address, not the destination. So the switch will check if the source MAC address does not exist on the MAC table, the MAC address will be added and the board number as a new entry to the MAC table. Now, if the source MAC address does exist, it's already added before to the MAC table. The switch will just refresh here the timer. Why? Because by default, the switch will keep each entry for five minutes. Within these five minutes, from that port will be dropped from the MAC table. So if the source does not exist, it will be added. What we will add? The MAC and the port number of that device. If it exists, the switch will update the timer. What's the timer default value for the entry to be remains on the switch MAC table five minutes. Now, what if the MAC address already exists on the table, but 
in different port here. The switch in this case, we consider this as a new entry, this scenario. Packages exist, but instead of port one, it become connected. So it's a new entry, which means that the MAC address will remain same, but the port will be what? Updated. And it will consider as what? As a new entry. Now, once we have covered all of these three scenarios, we are done with the learning process. Now, the next step or the process of the switch is to make a forward decision. How? The switch simply will examine or check the destination MAC address. If the destination MAC address already on the MAC table, it will be forward directly to the ingress port. For example, the destination MAC, according to the table, connected with the port 15, so the message will be directly switched at set to board 15. In case the MAC and the board already available in the MAC table of the destination now, not the source. Now, if the destination MAC address is not in the table, what the switch will do in this case, the switch simply will forward or flood out all the interfaces except of the one it received it from, which means trade will be sent out to all of the boards except of the ingress port in case the distribution mark is not in the table. Any question until here? So we talk about the learning process, the possibilities during the learning, and how we can make a decision to forward the frames. Now we need to talk about the forwarding methods, how the switch will forward every ingress frames. The switch will use a software on application specific integrated circuits to make a very quick decision. Usually the switch will use one of two methods and it's already, by the way, covered before on unit, I think, eight. And you already had a quiz yesterday about this forwarding methods. So the switch will use one of two methods in order to make a decision after it's received the frame. So how the frame will forward, or how the switch, sorry, will forward the frame. We can use one of two methods. The first method, store, Check forward. As you see, I added check store at forward switching. Or the switch can use cut through switching. So what's the difference between them? Quick. Now store at forward, which means the switch will receive the entire full frame. Ensure that the frame is valid by examining the FCS field the frame check sequence, field and value. After that, if it's error free, frame, it will be forwarded to the destination. Otherwise, it will be dropped. So, when we use a store and forward the switching, the switch will receive the entire frame, ensure that the frame is valid. Usually, store and forward is a Cisco preferred switching methods, or let me say the default method preferred to be. Now, second one, cut through switching. Simply forwards the frame immediately after determining the destination MAC address. So once the switch determine the destination MAC address, the switch will make the forward decision. Which egress board should be used and the frame will be forwarded to. Usually, after we read the first what, how many bits, after we read the first 64 bits, we can determine the destination MAC address in this case. 
So let us talk about store and forward switching in a little bit more details. Store and forward in, gen in general has two primary characteristics. First one, error checking. Second one, buffering. So, error checking, as you see, when we talk about frame or store and forward switching, the switch will receive the entire frame. So the forward decision will be made after we receive the full frame. FCS here is the last field of the frame. So error checking simply after the switch receiving the entire frame on the ingress port, the switch will compare the frame check sequence value, the FCS value, which already a value added to the last field of the data graph with what? With FCS value, the switch recalculated. So the switch will recalculate the FCS frame check sequence and will make a comparison between the one on the last field and the recalculated one. So in case there is no error, which means the frame is error free, the switch will forward the frame. In case values are not match, what the switch will do, the switch will discard the frame, drop it. It will not be forward. So this is why we say store and forward. Store, check the error, then forward the frame. So first benefit is error checking or characteristic. Second one, buffering. Buffering. The ingress interface will buffer the frame, will save the frame for temporary amount of time while it will check the FCS. Now, what's the main benefits of the buffering? This also allows the switch to adjust to potential difference in speed between the ingress and egress. It allows different Ethernet port speeds to communicate with each other without a problem. So if we have a, let me say, big enough buffering size, in this case, we are able to use the source or the source can operate at one gigabit per second, where the receiver will only support the speed 100 megabit per second. So we know the source is faster here than the receiver. Since we have a buffer, large frame buffer, in this case, faster boards can forward the frame to slower boards without losing the frame. So this is the main benefits of the buffering here. Now, cut through switching, as you see, will make the decision after we read the destination MAC address header. So once we read the destination MAC, the decision of the forward will be made. So cut it through, forward the frame immediately after we determine the destination MAC. Now fragment free method here is a modified form of cut through switching in which the switch will only forward the frame after it reads the type field. So we have cut through and we have enhanced cut through switching. What we call the enhanced cut through method fragment free. Now the fragment free will make the decision after we read the type field. After we read the type. Now, fragment free switching provide better error checking than cut through. Also, it will not increase the latency as well. Now, for the cut through, once we read 
or once we receive at least the 64 bytes, not bits, sorry, it will make a decision. Now, what are the main concepts of a cut through switching? Main characteristics. It's appropriate for a switch needing latency to be under 10 microseconds. Let me see real time data. Does not check that frame check sequence field. So it will propagate error frame. Even if we have any problem with the frame, it will be forward. It may lead to a bandwidth issues if the switch propagates too many errors. In case the switch forward too many errors, it might affect the bandwidth, reduce the performance. Finally, it cannot support aborts with different speeds going from the ingress to egress. Why? Cut through switching, sorry, fast and forward switching can support different speeds going from in to out. How? Through the buffer. By using the buffer or the phone. Any question until here? Okay, so now, we need to know the switching domain, especially the collision domain. Now, when we have a collision domain before, we need to know when we will have a collision domain. What's the collision? Also, collision simply two devices place a data on the network at the same time. Two ends transfer a data or a transmit a data at the same time. Now, switches eliminate the collision domain and reduce the congestion. How? In case there is a full duplex mode on the link, the collision domain are eliminated. We do not have a collision domain. In case both ends operate at full duplex. Why there is no collision? Because of the full duplex mode, as we have discussed, devices will be able to send and receive at the same time. So when there is one or more devices now in half duplex, there will be a collision domain. What's the collision domain? Now suppose PCA here, it's half duplex. And port one on the switch operates also on half duplex. Now, where is our collision domain here? The connection between the two devices. This is our collision domain. So, at port A, it's a possibility to have a collision. At port one of the switch, S2, also, there is a possibility for the collision to occur. Why? Because it's a half duplex, not full duplex. So there will now, <coughs> sorry, be contention for the bandwidth. Collision here are possible. So in full duplex mode, is there any possibility for the collision? No. Half duplex, yes, collision domain is available. Now most devices, including Cisco and Microsoft, use auto negotiation as a default setting for duplex and display. We have talked about the configuration. So, in case auto negotiation and the IX is available, duplex should be auto and the speed should be auto in order to allow for the auto negotiation. Now, in this example, we have a full duplex at both ends. So the mode here is selecting duplex, the speed is 100, we do not have any collision domain in this scenario. 
So in case the Ethernet switchboard is operating in hard to flex, so each segment here is in its own collision domain, which means center and receiver consider as a part of the collision domain. There are no collision domain when the switchboards operating in full duplex. Only we might, or there could be a collision domain if the switchboard is operating in half duplex. So in case of the half duplex, the switchboard will be a part of the collision domain. But is it clear here? Only in half duplex. Now, now where is the broadcast domain? Now, broadcast domain simply is referred to the MAC broadcast domain. MAC broadcast domain simply containing all the devices on the LAN that receives a frame from a host. So, now let us assume this PC send a broadcast frame. Now, what the switch will do? The switch will forward it to all other connected boards. So, where is the broadcast domain here? The entire network. The entire network. Now we have extended here, extended our broadcast domain. We have two switches with a trunk connection. So our broadcast domain, all the devices attached to the network through the switch. So this is what a broadcast domain means. So the broadcast domain extends across all layer one or layer two devices on the LAN. We are talking about the devices and the ethernet or the switches. Only layer three device, in our case, the router, will break the broadcast domain. Now, broadcast domain is also called MAC broadcast domain. Why? Because when the MAC address receives, it will be all Fs. So F, 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 which means it's a broadcast. It will be forwarded to all connected devices within that lab. So the broadcast domain consists all devices on the LAN that receives the broadcast message. This is how we can clearly identify our broadcast domain. So where is my broadcast domain? All devices connected and we receive a broadcast traffic. All the devices here is, are a part of the broadcast domain. Single device, what will happen? One sender send the broadcast frame, so it will be flooded out to all other boards except of the ingress. What we call these devices? A broadcast domain. All devices on that that receive the broadcast frame from a host. So when layer two switches receives the broadcast, what the switch will do? How the switch will treat or have a broadcast message? It will be sent out to all interfaces except of incoming board, the ingress interface. So in case we have too many broadcasts, it may cause a congestion. It will reduce the network performance. We will have low or poor network performance in this case. Increasing the devices, it will cause that the broadcast domain to be expanded as well. So as you see here, we have at the beginning only this network, sorry, only this LAN considered as a broadcast domain. One second, please. Ah. 
Då vet passar det. mentioned before here we have extended our network so by extending the LAN network what we are doing for the broadcast domain we are increasing or expanding the broadcast domain as well now finally how we can handle the network congestion properly alleviate it or handle it the congestion cases. Switches use the MAC address table and full duplex in order to eliminate the collision and avoid congestion. Features of the switch that will alleviate the congestion are the following. How we can avoid, handle, manage the congestion problem. And here, poor network traffic is and it will, in this case, affecting or reducing the traffic performance. One of the solution is to use fast port speeds. So far, port, uh, port speeds, depending on the model, switch may have up to 100 gigabit per second port speed. So the transmission here speed can consider a solution of this case for the congestion. Second one, fast internal switching. This use a fast internal bus to share or shared memory to improve the performance. Large frame buffers. This allows for temporary storage while processing large quantities of frames. As we have mentioned before, Main benefits of larger frame buffer will enable different speed, okay, for the ingress and egress. For example, it will enable the traffic to be received from faster port, operates at one gigabit per second, and it will forward it to slower here ports, operates, let me say, at 100 megabit per second without losing the frame. How? Using a large frame or larger frame buffer. Finally, last solution to handle the congestion issue is the high board density. Larger number of ports. So this will provide many ports for a devices connected to a LAN switch with less cost. This also provides more local traffic with less congestion. I will give you an example. One switch with 48 ports, better than two switches with 24 each in the context of the cost and traffic performance as well, or reducing or avoiding the congestion. Now, this is the end of module two. What we are going to cover next week, inshallah, or this coming class, we will start talking about the virtual lab configuration, native, default VLAN, trunk network, access, and many issues related to that VLAN. So today we have done with module one and two of CCNA two or the second part of the course. Do you have any questions?